Hey everyone, it's Jody and Bauer. Um, Bauer's just off camera here, playing uh, shy. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to talk about setting your dog up for success during training. Um, one of the powers of positive reinforcement training is that your dog is figuring out what it is you're asking them. You're working as a team, um, but they're ultimately figuring out what it is you're asking them. And that helps them retain it longer. And it can be more fun, you know, it's better than, you know, they used to teach sits by putting your hand on the dog's bum and forcing them to sit down and kind of holding them there and, uh, you know, repeating sit over and over and over again. Um, and the problem with that is that they found that a lot of dogs would eventually learn it, uh, but they didn't necessarily retain it if you didn't do it over and over and over again. And they found that through positive reinforcement, the teaching, a, the dog figuring it out themselves helps them retain it longer. Uh, so, um, and it also makes it more fun for them. You know, having someone sit on you until you understand that they want you to sit isn't fun. Um, playing with your owner slash mom slash dad, whatever, um, and getting treats for it is fun. <laughs> so, um, but what you do want, so they need to figure it out with your help. But what you do want to do is set up the training area so that they have no choice but to fall upon what it is you want them to do. Um, so, I was listening to um, a podcast, Drinking from the Toilet with Hannah Brannigan. It's a great podcast if you're into training. Um, and she was talking about a new way, or new to me way, her way of teaching place. Uh, and Bauer has always hated place. He actually just hates training in general. He always looks at me suspiciously, um, like I'm trying to trick him. Um, and growing up with 17 uncles, I get that. I always think everyone's trying to trick me. So, <laughs> um, but place is something that he knows and he just doesn't like doing. So what I want to try and do is teach him, reteach him a new way, maybe give it a different cue. And I'm going to show you the start of that today. He, it's not going to be done today. I'm just going to go through a few um, few beginning um, few beginning treats. I don't know why I'm, I'm I'm blanking on the word, but I'm just going to do it just going to show you a couple of times so that you understand what it is I want to do. So, um, the old way I did place was still positive reinforcement. I would take the mat I put it on the ground. I'd, you know, put it right in front of the dog until they walked on it, click and treat. Um, you know, and they, from there, you, every time that they go near it, click and treat, click and treat for them smelling it, click and treat until you get to the point where you're clicking and treating for them to get on the mat, um, which is great. It's it um, it is a it's. You know, it's fun for the dogs if they get it. Um, not every dog gets it. And so this is a way to, to do it so that they, so that you're setting them up for success, so that they can't not step on the mat. <laughs> so um, I'm in a hallway, which doesn't give him a lot of room. You don't need to do this in a hallway. Um, Hannah Brannigan, when she was talking about it, she just does it with the wall. She didn't say anything about, you know, making sure that they don't have a way to go on either side. Um, I just happen to have a small house with a small hallway. So it works out. I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna leave this mat right here. It's about um, a body length, maybe a little bit less, but about a body length away, uh, about a Bower's body length. So you want it to be about the body length, maybe a little bit more uh, away from the wall so that, you know, when they're over there, they have to turn and come back to hit the mat. Um, 
And what I'm going to do, and I'm, I'll just tell you real quick, and then I'll see if Bauer will try it, um, is I'm going <laughs> to throw the tree to the door. Um, it's better if you have a wall, because I'm a little worried about this, these gaps underneath here that he might, uh, the tree might go under. But I'm going to try my best to keep the tree in this room, not go under the wall. Um, actually, I just thought of something. So this is, you know, thinking on the fly, setting up your antecedents so that your dog can't fail. So I'm going to take another towel. I'm just going to kind of buffer it right there so that it can't go under the door. So he has no choice, to, so the tree has no choice but to land inside this room. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get him to come. Bauer! Bauer, come here! Ah. He's already reluctant, so I'm going to give him a treat just for coming, for being such a good boy. Bow. Bow, bow. How come he's going away? Bow. So I'm going to throw the treat over there. So I'm going to go get it. I'm sorry, it might be in the way. And when it comes back, I'm going to click and treat for that. Bow. Where are you going? Come on! You want to play? You want to play? Come on! Come on! Ready? You get it. Ah! You get it. That's Gia downstairs. Ah! That time I didn't throw it far enough, but I'm still going to click him because that was my fault. I'm going to move this a little bit further away. And the point of me moving it further away is I'm hoping he'll notice that that's what's changed. It's okay. It's okay. She's just barking. There's nobody here. Come on. Go get your treat. Good boy. And you can see he's not a fast-paced dog. He never, well, when he runs, he's fast. But when it comes to training, he's not a very fast-paced dog. And that's fine. You do what your dog can do. Don't feel bad if your dog is. Good job, boy. Good job. I'm going to give him a little break. G is being a little bit of distraction for him. Um, so... That's the basics of it. You're just going to click and treat for them, touching the mat, move it further and further away. Eventually, you're going to want to move it to an area where, you know, there aren't walls to keep him on the, on the direct path um, so that he can get used to or he can figure out on his own that what you want is for him to touch this mat. Um, and um, it won't... You know, I did a few repetitions there, more than I probably needed to before moving on to the next thing, only because I wanted you to see it. Um, but he understood pretty quickly that touching the mat was what I wanted, and I could have pretty quickly, if I had something set up already, moved it to a different area uh, to show you that. Uh, but I just wanted to give you the idea of what it is to make sure you're setting your dog up for success. You want to make it so that they're pretty much falling on the right thing to do to begin with. And then you make it more challenging. 
um, but you want them to succeed. You don't want them, there's none of that um, need to fail so that you can correct them. There's none of that. Um, you know, studies have shown that that just isn't an effective way of, of learning. And it also has shown that it is um, more likely to cause any learner, whether it be a dog, a human, um, they did a study with pigeons, it's more likely to cause the learner stress um, and make them a little bit more reluctant to try. So, sorry, I had a little bit of technical difficulties. So we're talking about uh, making sure that you're not tricking your learner into um, doing something wrong so you can correct them. It causes stress and frustration um, and they found um, in a study about pigeons that the learners that were taught without corrections, without um, being forced to kind of make mistakes on purpose so that they could then be corrected, um, were less likely to make mistakes because they weren't stressed about making the wrong decision. So keep it easy, keep it simple, keep it so that your dog is having fun or your cat or whatever. Um, whoever you're working with, your kids, your significant other, make sure you're all having fun. Don't make it difficult, don't, um, don't make it stressful, have fun. Play positive and stay positive. And enjoy your training. Talk to y'all later. Sorry, I had a little bit of technical difficulties. So we're talking about uh, making sure that you're not tricking your learner into um, doing something wrong so you can correct them. It causes stress and frustration um, and they found um, in a study about pigeons that the learners that were taught without corrections, without um, being forced to kind of make mistakes on purpose so that they could then be corrected, um, were less likely to make mistakes because they weren't stressed about making the wrong decision. So keep it easy, keep it simple, keep it so that your dog is having fun or your cat or whatever. Um, whoever you're working with, your kids, your significant other, make sure you're all having fun. Don't make it difficult, don't, um, don't make it stressful, have fun. Play positive and stay positive. Enjoy your training. Talk to y'all later.